Turn signal switch is mounted. Got it as close to the shifter as possible. These are the two harnesses I have to join together. I'm just trying to decide how I want to do it. These have bullet connectors. I don't have the female side for these. So what I'm thinking is I have some of those waterproof four pin connectors. I believe there's eight wires on there. Two, four. Okay, this has seven. Oh, because there's a ground wire. So I'm thinking of using two of those, two four pins, but I don't know. That's something I got to figure out before I do something and make a mistake. But this thing is, it's in the perfect spot. This is the kind that lights up, but I'm using the dash signals, obviously. Um, got the accessory wires tied up out of the way on the radio bracket. They'll be way up behind the dash so you can't see them. That's the radio and heater and all that. I'm getting sidetracked again. All right, back to work on the turn signal switch. All right, so instead of making one fat harness out of all this stuff, I'm going to do everything in separate harnesses. I just decided that a second ago. So I'm taping up the uh, turn signal switch wires right there. I've decided I'm just going to hardwire them in. I'm not going to make them removable. Because there's really no reason to ever pull the turn signal switch off. And if I have to, then I will cut and splice. So I'm going to finish taping this up real fast. And then figure out how I want to route it down along the steering column so you can't see it. Because I don't want it to look like crap. Once the dash is on. Which is probably going to have to happen pretty soon. Which is going to put me on my back on the floor. But whatever. It's got to look right. I'm thinking I'm going to take the harness, strap it up to here. I just don't want to put too much weight on this. And uh, then just run it down and then up along the column. But I don't know how far the speedo and all that sticks back. I don't know how far anything's going to stick back. So once I get it taped up and connected, then I'll figure all that out. So that's where we're at right now. All right, wires are trimmed down. I made them all different lengths. So once the butt connectors are on there, it still lays as tight as I can. There's all the excess I cut off of it. So here's where we're at. This is the signal switch I have. That's the one with the green light on the end of it, which I'm not using. But uh, there's the other one with the big metal end. And I guess it has the, the pullout tab for the uh, hazards or whatever. That's the harness I have right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And that right there is how you hook them together. Couldn't be easy, any easier. Now the tricky part is, and it's not even really tricky, but there's two light blues, two dark blues. And if you use this harness, you'll see what I'm saying. It was all connected at one point to one of the GM harness plugs. Um... One goes to the turn signal light bulb, one goes to the dash indicator on both of these, the two blues, light blue, dark blue. That's a ground. This should be grounded, but the column's painted, so I'm going to run the ground up to somewhere. I haven't decided yet. Probably right up under this, uh, maybe right in here somewhere. I don't know yet. I'll figure that out when the time comes. So now it's time to splice these all together. I think I decided I'm going just like this with the harness and I'll zip tie it there and that way it'll come up and it'll right under the column, which you're going to see it no matter what I do. It's impossible not to see it, but it's going to be like that, like as tight as I can keep it like that. I'm going to zip tie it right around the front of this. I'm going to zip tie it right around the back. I'm going to keep it as tight to the column as I possibly can. If I thought I could get in there, that'd be freaking sweet if I could drill the holes and run it in there. But anyway, all right, back to business. I get caught up in my thoughts while I'm filming this stuff and I start talking about it. All right, time to start splicing. First thing first, the black is the shortest right there. So I'm starting with that. 
So black is the right rear turn signal. So dark green is the right rear turn signal. So that's how these non-insulated connectors look before you shrink tube them. I like them so much better than the insulated ones because those are, they use cheap plastic. Now they make some that uh, use, have heat shrink tubing attached to them, but I don't like that either. I don't want to crimp on my heat shrink tubing. So you slide the tubing up there and bow. There you have it. Let me see if I can find. Here's the connectors I'm using. It comes with a million of them. Now I'm using a crap load of these small ones. I'm using a handful of those. Haven't touched the big ones. But then they give you a crap load of extras as well. So got that on Amazon. Got this tape on Amazon. This is Tessa harness tape. And this is double walled um, shrink tubing with glue. So it all works perfect. Let me go ahead and knock these wires out real fast we'll be right back all right all the wires are connected time to finish wrapping this with tape i'm gonna have this ground wire sticking out to go somewhere i haven't decided where that's going yet but i'll figure that out it's got to ground to the uh turn signal housing which is touching the column so technically it should be grounded but the like i said the column's painted so it's impossible to tell. Is this thing zoomed in or am I just super close? But yeah. So there's all those. This is for the hazards. Which. It says it's not used. But I don't even know why they put it on this switch. See what I'm saying? Flasher terminal P. Not used. Not used. Not used. Not used. I don't understand for like any of the harnesses, you don't use it. So I don't know why it's there. I'm just going to wrap it up. I'm not going to cut it off. I cut it down a little bit, but I'm just going to wrap it up in the harness just in case because you never know. I'll cut it off and then I'll need it. You know what I mean? So we'll go ahead and tape this up and be right back. And there we have it. Let's see if I can swing around this way. See what I'm seeing. So I have the ground wire. Where is it? Can't find it. Anyhow, the ground wire goes right into here, into the base of the uh, turn signal switch, between the column and the switch. Now this is kind of ghetto. I had to zip tie it here, and I zip tied it there, because I don't know a better way to attach it. So if Ford has a factory uh, wire cover, somebody let me know, because I'll use it in a heartbeat, if I can find it. And then, goes right up there, straight to the fuse box it's kind of tighter than I wanted it to be but um that's okay no big deal because I don't want to be able to see it when I'm sitting here I don't want to be able to see the wires going up behind the dash either that was my goal like if a passenger's in the car I want I'm hoping it just disappears so anyway there's that now on to the rest of this mess once I start taping things up it'll start to look a lot better now it already looks a lot better over here. Oh, I don't know if I put this in the video or in a video, but I also extended the dimmer switch wires. Now the only problem is the dimmer switch doesn't fit on behind that factory plate. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is just put nuts on there and just have it like that. Not a big deal. I'll cut a hole in the carpet and call it a day. And I haven't figured that out yet. I haven't put much thought into it. But it's getting there. All right. 
That's it for the turn signal switch. This is interior part two.